ഹായ് എല്ലാവർക്കും ഡോക്ടർ ഫിഷിംഗിലേക്ക് സ്വാഗതമുണ്ട് ലേഡീസ് ആൻഡ് ജെന്റിൽമാൻ വെൽക്കം ബാക്ക് ടു ഡോക്ടർ ഫിഷിംഗ് ഐ ഹാവ് ഓൾറെഡി ടോൾ സം ഓഫ് മൈ സബ്സ്ക്രൈബേഴ്സ് ദാറ്റ് ഐ വിൽ ബി ഡൂയിങ് എ ലൈഫ് സ്ട്രീം ഓൺ ബേസിക് ഫിഷിംഗ് ടെക്നിക് and um, it's the second day in a row that i am live streaming so uh, i thought i have already promised so i should i should go and uh, uh, talk about that uh, uh, basic fishing techniques uh, to the subscribers so i'm going to actually uh, send a link uh, for you guys to join my live stream i mean google hangout if you can so basically today uh, we are talking about basic fishing technique for beginners i know you guys are a uh, wonderful fisherman and uh, you guys know how to catch fish uh, how to set up a hook and uh, um, you know all these uh, basic ideologies but uh, uh, i am talking about somebody who just start fishing there are like hundreds of uh, uh, or millions of um fishing channels available now on youtube and other social media so people are more attracted to fishing and i would like to give some insight for those who just started fishing or or who wish to start fishing soon so uh, i just want to see um kelly polson hello can you get my outdoor one day hey doctor hi how are you uh jean mark boucher uh, i haven't seen him before hey hi uh, jean uh kelly polson i am not too bad uh walked until 5 o'clock uh it's been snowing continuously for the last two days now so we have lots of snow and it's cold not that cold to say like it's minus 7 degrees celsius so it isn't that cold uh uh J- jerry i i i am here to talk about some basic fishing techniques so by that i mean you know we all know how to catch fish how to set up a hook how to put the reel uh, the line on the reel and um, you know the basic baits soft plastics or um, uh, live baits or dead baits or whatever uh, this is all about who just started fishing and i will be categorizing into uh, different categories um, so mainly we'll be talking about a basic idea you need to know when you catch uh, walleye uh, when you catch perch then uh pike uh trouts of different kinds uh, or catfish or um, uh, some other species species that is found in india that i i haven't had a um opportunity to present you guys with some of the fishing from india that i have done because i i have recently started this uh, youtube channel and i wasn't able to show you any good content from india so uh i would like to say uh, anybody who joined uh, today please subscribe to each other and if you guys can actually join my live stream so more than one people can talk about uh fishing today uh, that would be wonderful if anybody wants to join uh, please follow the link that i have sent to you guys on the live chat um so uh, i'm going to start with the pike so when 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 we go for pike fishing you know uh, we need to know like um, uh, what lake we are going to fish and uh, what is the fishing regulation on that uh, particular lake that you are going fishing i have seen uh, in canada uh, i was fishing in one of the lakes i uh, i would i don't mind saying like it was a rattlesnake lake or solid dam uh, in that reservoir i was fishing and there were like three other people fishing and uh, they came up to me and asked for um can i borrow one lure from you so uh, i said you should carry your own lures when you when you come fishing you should carry your own lures and hooks and gears for yourself uh you know it's not about giving a 2 dollar stuff to somebody else it's it's all about you know you you got to you got to buy everything you need for fishing on that particular water body so uh, they came up to me and they asked me like what fish you are trying to catch and i i asked them like what what are you guys looking for they said we just came here and we seen this lake and we are fishing we don't know what species we have so that's in canada 
And I really asked if you catch a fish and do you know the rule? Uh, whether it is a catch and release or uh, to what size of fish you can possess. You know, they, they were not aware of any of those stuff. And I wasn't ready to give out, give out my, my lures just because, you know, they are ignorant about the water body where they are fishing and they don't know what lures to use how they have to be uh, using that particular lure in that particular water body. So um, even though it is a $1 stuff, I didn't want to give it out. Just because uh, we all need to know uh, which lake we are going and what's the fishing regulation in that particular lake. Uh, nowadays uh, in uh, social media, we are talking a lot about catch and release practice. We are talking a lot about, you know, some species are getting less and less in our Canadian water bodies or worldwide, you know, nowadays uh, there's lots of fishing channels. Uh, people are very passionate about fishing and uh, some people, um, yeah, please, Kendrick Catman, please do uh, just support everybody and that's all we need to do. You know, uh, we all, some of, our, some of us are really beginners in YouTube uh, area. So, you know, it is the best way to grow each other. You know, just because you guys came here, Jerry, Jerry is always here for me to uh, to support me. Uh, Mr. Hard Charger too. Uh, I, I I I never. Yeah, we just talked to Chris. That's Chris. Uh, I Chris, how are you, man? Um, and Kendrick Catman, and all you guys, you always here to support me uh, with my live videos and stuff. Today I wasn't uh, really ready to do a live stream. Just because um, uh, I have posted that I will be going live uh, today at 7:30, um, and I really don't want to disappoint any of my subscribers. And it's not about uh, the whole subscribers. There are some active participants. There are some uh, hardcore fishing people. Uh, they subscribe to my channel, and they ask me about some ideas. And I I can't resist to say like you know I won't be able to do that today. And even if it is like two days in a row, I don't see anything wrong with that. You know, people who are free, people who wants to uh, join, they can join and they can support each other and they can get some information. If it is like something you already had, you know, you must have heard everything what I'm talking today. Uh, maybe it can be a new idea. But what I was trying to say, so I went to that uh, particular lake and I was trying to fish and these guys came up and they had no idea what they're fishing for and uh, there's uh they they were not aware of the fishing regulation in that particular lake too so and i i was what i i what, what where where i was stopped i i lost it so what i was trying to say like you know uh, on social media you will see lots of people talking about you know catch and release practice and you know some fish uh species are going to extinct stuff like that just because you know people are ignorant about uh, the laws and regulations of uh, uh, the country uh, where they are fishing so in every country there should be some sort of uh, fishing regulation uh, in place uh, i have seen a lot of fishing videos from thailand where they catch big size to fish some like uh, bigger than me and they just kill it and eat it uh, i have seen uh, videos from philippines and i have seen videos from india and canada where they catch big fish and you know you can take one fish no no problem if you want to eat if that's a meal for you one day there's no problem taking a fish and you know fish some uh, lakes are uh, stocked with the uh, trouts and stuff that's that's for you to fish and eat and cook meal and if it is dinner for you one day go ahead and do that but uh, you should uh, you should still know that you know you won't be able to catch all the fish in the lake and uh, just you know try the uh, the lake the next day so basically uh right now we like your streams doctor in the house we love you we <laughs> love you too uh your uh our new family kelly when you guys do a live stream i will be there you know i work from uh seven o'clock until five o'clock then after that i am free so if you guys do a live stream and i work like four days and i i have four days off so basically, I'm off on four days. In that days, in those days, uh, if you do a live stream, I will be there for the full time to cheer you guys, to support you guys. 
um, when I'm working, I work from seven to five. Then after that, I'm still again free. Uh, and I will be supporting, uh, you know, uh, each and everybody uh, who um, who likes fishing and who likes hunting. And, you know, it's not only that, you know, who I have subscribed to a lot of people with the different, um, uh, different uh, content. Uh, some like um, fishing, some like uh, hunting. Some do, uh, you know, cooking. Some do blogs. Like, you know, uh, it's it's not about what. If, if it is something you like to enjoy, you know, go ahead and join them. You know, that's all you need to do. So uh, right now, I'm gonna come uh, straight into the topic about uh, pike fishing. So basically, pike like pike is a predator fish, so it likes to uh, attack its prey. And uh, your fishing lure sh uh, should have the nice presentation uh, for the pike to. Uh, uh, follow you and uh, take the bait. So basically, uh, live baits can be used, dead baits can be used, and there are regulations regarding you uh, using live baits and dead baits in some of the water bodies. Uh, if you're using a live bait, you know you should make sure like uh, it has to be caught from the same water body for you to uh, do the live uh, live bait. Uh, that's uh, Canadian law. A part of Canadian law. Tell me if I'm wrong um but uh, if you're using a smelt or uh, minos or anything like that if it is dead you know go ahead and use it if it is uh, the rule there uh so uh, we are coming uh, straight to the pike so we can use soft plastic lures so when you're catching pike pike likes to stay uh, in the shade sometimes they go deep into the water if you're fishing in summer season uh, the fish can go deep into the water where there is uh, not that hot for the fish so you have to cast it out farther and you know you, you should you can have a jerky movements or you can have uh you know how do you reel that back it can be slow it can be fast depending upon the lure you're using if it is a top water uh, lure then again it's going to change accordingly and if you're using a dead bait it's best to have a bell attached to uh, your your line so you obviously know when the fish gonna come and take the bait you obviously get the um and you should be using the best um you know you can buy uh, a lot of fishing rods and reel from amazon ebay aliexpress and stuff where everywhere there is fishing um fishing gears are sold but uh, you you need to make sure like what exactly you want to use you know i am using aglistic i am a fan of uh, aglistic shakespeare uh, I used to use a Shakespeare tiger, tiger one. That was like five, six years ago. Uh, and I still have that um, rod and reel. Like there's nothing wrong with that. After using for five years, it's still like new. So basically uh, these stuff, you are spending like over 200 bucks on your fishing rods and reels. So you buy the best one. You can change it every other day. Uh, and if it breaks, you know, basically you're losing your hundred dollars right there. If you're buying a good thing, there will be like a one year warranty on it and you know make sure you buying the best stuff and when you're buying uh, fishing rods uh, uh the fishing rod for perch is different from fishing rod what you use for walleyes so walleyes and pike can be the same one uh perch a different one and uh, for trout you can use a different medium action or uh, um you know, it all depends on the spe uh, species of fish that you are aiming. So uh, basically, buy a good stuff. Do you, you won't be able to change it like every other day, you know. Um, so basically, that's all about the pike. I'm not done with the pike. So pike like to attack the, uh, attack the it's a predator fish. So basically, it's going to come and attack your lure while you're using. And um, so basically, you can cast out further and Really slow or really uh, fast according to the uh, the the depth of the water and stuff. So if you're going ice fishing, uh, guys, I really want to ask one of you guys: uh, if you guys do a lot of ice fishing, uh, can you guys do a, a a live video on ice fishing? The basic technique. I'm not too hundred percent experienced with the uh, the ice fishing techniques, but I am very excited to go and do some ice fishing this time. Uh, fishing stuff is always expensive uh, all you have to do you buy whatever you want buy the best stuff come back uh, and tell your wife that you bought it for half price or it was on sale that's all the way you can get away from your wife if you're buying um i i, I bought like a five fishing uh, rod 
and uh, a lot of stuff this year and loads like tons of fishing loads but uh, they were all needed for me so i i had to buy it but uh, i have given a, a, a accurate uh price of all these items to my wife so basically um you know i'm happy and she's happy too oh you got it for half price good yeah i'm happy too so uh if uh, anybody uh, who are very experienced with ice fishing if you guys can do a, a live streaming a saving from my home hey how are you i have heard about pike but never uh hear anyone around here catching them yeah pike or jackfish people catch it's the it's the it's the best sport fish that you can find in alberta water bodies so uh there are different species of or different genus of that same uh, family so there is musky it comes in the same species of pike uh there is um, a pickerel it's kind of uh, uh in in that same group of uh, or family so all these fish are pretty much the same they are aggressive they are uh, they are predator kind of uh, fish so basically they uh, you you can have a good fight they are very feisty so you get the, the happiness you know the passion you know the satisfaction uh, of fishing when you when you hook onto a uh, a 10 pound or 20 pound pike then you you get it right away you know you don't have to you don't have to do anything you just you are happy right there if you if you hook onto a big pike so um how do i cook my fish uh basically i don't eat pike um i used to eat uh walleyes about a year ago maybe i tried like four or five times and i am you know it all it, it has all got that muddy taste and uh, i am not a, way, a big fan of uh, uh, freshwater fishes anyways so uh, but i like to eat trout i uh, like to eat perch so i use a uh, east indian style east indian or south indian style you can say east india or south india or oh, i am basically from kerala that's uh, uh, the southwest part of india if you know the um atlas of uh, the world atlas and if you can find india there we are at, i am at the right on the tail of that uh, india where it is engulfed with the uh, uh, sea so basically we have surrounded with the sea everywhere and uh, we get lots of fresh uh, salt water fish every day and i my, my dad never never eat dinner without fish so it is like uh, some sort of fish he he likes to have with his uh, dinner and we we like to eat lots of rice so basically uh, rice and fish the basic food like uh, here in uh, canada potatoes and uh, uh, stuff like that so it's the basic food and um, uh, like I'm, I'm talking about the freshwater fish, like a crappie or um, uh, the sucker fish or uh, tilapia, uh, bass, even bassa, they, 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 they have that muddy taste. I, I'm, I'm not a big fan of that. So basically I fry fish mostly. Sometimes I curry them. So when you, when you, when you do the currying of uh, a fish, it will be very hot. Uh, we put lots of turmeric powder, we put lots of um, coriander powder, we put lots of um, chili powder, canine powder, canine chili or hot chili powder. Then uh, we we put some other masala, like a mixture of um, cinnamon and cadmine and every other stuff mixed it together or grinded together. All this stuff will be used on our fish curry. So, you know, just because we are using that much spice in our food, uh, our intestine is very much prime for anything and everything you can eat a stone right after you eat our regular spicy food it will be just digested within no time so our, our system is very 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 adapted to take anything you know just because we eat lots of spicy food and spice is very good for your um, uh, uh, your health too like you know uh, and if there's no spice there's no taste like at least salt and pepper on everything so uh, basically um i know i i cook my fish in uh, indian style and canadian style sometimes i put some uh, bay leaf some uh, dill weed and uh, salt and pepper and some uh, margarine or um, a butter and i actually um bake the fish and it's very good and the best way 
that I have tried and that I enjoyed uh, cooking fish. So, uh, for example, tilapia uh, fillet or um, uh, salt fillet, you know, when you buy it, the best way to cook that fish, and it's uh, my favorite recipe that I have my own recipe, I would say. I would use um, uh, some fresh uh, lime juice, a little bit of lime juice, salt and pepper, and uh, mayonnaise. And um, I uh, heat up some margarine and uh, so it is uh, it is liquid now so i mix that all together and i use some breadcrumbs so you paste them you paint the fish with uh, all this uh, margarine salt and pepper lime juice mixture and you put some uh, uh, um, breadcrumbs on top of that and bake it for 20 25 minutes it is delicious like you you will love it so you know there, there are different ways of uh, cooking fish and i have some of my videos on uh, trout uh, catch and cook uh, I, I have a new brook trout catch and cook video is coming up uh, next on i think on monday if i can possibly finish that editing uh, i haven't started it yet but uh, i'm hoping to have a brook trout catch and fish so basically uh, that day i went for fishing uh, guys and it was um, uh, 11 no 12 degrees celsius uh, here in uh, where i live so I went to the nearest um, uh, lake, it's called Spruce Kuli Lake, and they have some artigayang, walleyes, and uh, uh, brook trout in there, and brown trout. There are a few brown trout. Those brown trouts are not stocked in there, but they are there for a longer time. That lake was one time um, uh, for irrigation purpose, for cleaning purpose, it was fully uh, emptied, and uh, for aeration, they they did that and they caught like a hundred hundred brown trout they put put them back that's what they said uh, i don't know to what extent they are true but i haven't caught a brown trout from there but there are tons of brook trout in there and arctic gayang there it's a catch and release syrup and there is a cougar alert in that particular area where i am going fishing so cougar if you guys have seen a cougar before uh you know how terrifying that should be i don't know i have never met one before I have met a grizzly bear right in front of me, like uh, about 10 to 15 meters that, like that close, face to face. When I went to uh, Jasper, I went to Miyati Hot Spring, and I uh, I was with my friend, and we went ahead to the source of the hot spring. That was uh, that was like a uh, one 1.5 miles away from the uh, the artificial um, hot spring. So we walked all the way there. Then there was some fun. Some people coming down the down the hill they said they spotted a grizzly bear there and you know i am very crazy with all these things i really wanted to uh, see like what's going on so i kept walking and i was at the source of the hot spring and you know there's lots of sulfur dioxide and the clear water is coming through the you know you, you have to see the earth is a beautiful place wherever we live it's a beautiful place and i have seen the natural uh, hot spring i just stayed there for a little while then um man i just met a grizzly bear face to face i thought it's a black person uh in front of me uh, uh please don't be offended with that bird uh, i thought it, it was a black guy so i kind of uh, stared at him for a second then all i did run somebody told me to run and the point is like you don't run you have to act like you're dead or you have to take a big stick and show the bear like you, you know you are you are bigger than the bear the do or die uh, series that i have watched before it says so but i never ever thought about anything but to run run for my life and i did and uh, fortunately i was i was safe and uh, i really really uh, i am thankful to uh, those people who stopped me there uh, but still i i when they here and uh, you know had to have that situation but you know basically uh, canada is a place where there's lots of bears um you know you have to take your bear spray when you go for camping you you, you can't underestimate you know bear like they can be anywhere i have met bears taking out garbage from um, one of the it was an overflow uh, in jasper when i went camping uh, all the campsites were filled, so I didn't have any choice but to go to the overflow uh, campsite where there's like you can pick, 
it's like a acres of lands and you can pick one of the spot and the garbages are not properly disposed there and environmental canada or park canada should be very careful about that uh that area because you know people just throw their waste somewhere i have seen and uh, they just wash their uh, greasy uh steak or whatever stuff right there and bears can come to your place um and i have seen one there so basically i have met it uh, then um, uh, we were driving to some other place from uh, jasper and uh, uh, they spotted a uh, black bear you know that was a grizzly bear and uh, we had the opportunity to you know the the environmental canada wildlife everywhere everybody were there so they could um, uh, we could just stop there and look at the mirror or window and see uh, the um, the grizzly bear just walking by and eating food you know that was wonderful but um, it won't be that easy to get away from a bear if you have uh, if you met a bear face to face so uh, your basic instinct is to run and you might do it but basically you have to take a big stick and uh, act like uh, you're bigger than the bear or you have to act like you are dead you know some of the ideas you can use but uh, uh, you would probably run for your life so that's all about pike guys i i am very disappointed or i was really disappointed i was really sad when i went went there i really wanted to do some fishing in uh, uh, minuwanga lake where there is beautiful huge trophy sized uh, uh, brown trout and uh, rainbow trout in that minuwanga lake but unfortunately i went for a boat ride uh, but the people with me were not that interested uh, in fishing so basically i had to just say not to that and i came home uh, really really uh, uh, you know i was really disappointed that i couldn't do the fishing and i have seen a few people doing fishing but they haven't caught any but i i really wanted to at least try from the shore to do some fishing i am a shore fisherman i don't have a boat i go everywhere and i do fishing from the um, virginia fisherman passion for hunting and fishing coming weekend fish boat ride or whatever you want to do so this family of uh, of ours can meet face to face uh, i have already told rocco that i will be traveling to um, um la and uh, it's in july i believe um you guys are vaccinating you know uh, you guys support each other and that's all we need uh, and i don't know to uh, i am off roading now you know, i'm going away from the topic i got some sort of tangentiality where i start with the topic and go further away uh, from the main topic when i when i get to speak about something but uh, you, you know we don't have a agenda or we don't have a fixed rule what to talk so basically i am kind of enjoying uh, the chit chat with you guys uh whole chef fishing hi how are you man so um so that's uh, that's the best pike fishing um i had a few lakes that uh, catch and lift and uh, i was fishing uh, about like six o'clock in the evening in summertime there wasn't a lot of there was not enough water in that lake or I, it was like a you know drying up then i was catching pike one after another i was like you know i, I thought like i was catching the same pike again and again like for any for each and every cast you get a fish a, a pike and i was i was thinking like i was catching the same pike so i was like i have to hit his nose and say like you know uh, don't come back but uh, you know that that was a lake where there's a catch and release and um, i went last year hoping for the same there was no fish i tried like two days in a row uh, me and one of my friend went overnight when it was like raining like hell and and it was so uh, so cold in there we still did the night fishing overnight we didn't have in, even a bite so basically i don't know what happened to all those fishes like i, I would definitely sport some uh, pikes uh, swimming there but uh, an year after i would say like a six month or seven month after i don't know who caught those fish or what happened to those fish or uh, are those fish are dead somehow uh, they were all gone like i tried like uh, I was pretty sure like there is fish so me and my friend spent overnight but didn't have a bite the next day I went again all day no legs so 
I don't know where they've gone. So the second point I am talking about um, uh, will be walleyes. Walleyes, you know, uh, wherever you uh, see like walleye catching, or uh, in social media, people talk a lot about walleyes. Um, if you catch a bass, uh, you are a fisherman, and if you catch a walleye, then you are, uh, you know, you are an expert. So basically, uh, my my wife's first catch in Canada that was a walleye. So she just promoted to that uh, expert fishing. The second day she started fishing, or the first day she started fishing. The second day she went trout fishing, and she got a big, big uh, rainbow trout. So, uh, and the last two videos that I posted, she caught more walleyes than me. I caught more pikes that day, but she caught more walleyes than me. She's wonderful with the fishing stuff. Uh, she had a problem uh, in the early stage that she hooked onto every every fish but uh, because of her poor handling with the rod uh, uh the fish break off the uh the line or something happens it's always a loss so thereafter i had to teach her a little bit of a technique how to uh how to land the fish that you hooked you can hook a fish some people like oh my god it's almost here but it's dropped but a fishing is complete only when you actually get the fish to touch and uh, you know say bye then that that's when you you're done with the, uh, catching a fish so catching a fish is equal to you have to catch the fish uh you have to literally catch the fish on, in your hand and you have to let him go then that's what is called a complete cycle of fishing so my wife had that problem but i had to teach her how to keep her rod straight and uh, make sure the tension on the line is on the on the rod not on the line so what happens if you if you keep the uh, rod like a straight forward or keep it down then the line will be uh, your line will have the most tension there won't be any leverage for your rod so your rod is actually useless when you you can use like a um, you can use hand fishing it's the same method where there is all the all the tension of uh, uh, the line is in the line itself so Basically, you have to keep your uh, your rod straight and keep it up so that all the leverage of the rod will be on the line and you can safely land a fish. So walleyes, walleyes like to eat. They are night predators. Usually, if you know the uh, biology of uh, uh, walleyes, they tend to stay in deeper water bodies. They like to stay in deeper water bodies. Sometimes, if there is an irrigation or something and there is moving water, all fishes including walleyes will come up there uh, specifically white fish uh, they will come to the moving water uh, and uh, uh, the best time to catch walleyes like i told you in the last episode too like we have to we have to go you know the best time i caught all the walleyes i go uh, go fishing at uh, 10 o'clock i start fishing i reach there at 11 o'clock i start fishing from 11 o'clock at night until six o'clock in the morning, that's the best time. I caught all the uh, all the walleyes. The walleye walleye can see at night too. Uh, the pike, you know, when you catch a pike, usually the walleyes will be like sleeping. They don't want, you know, you guys do whatever. You know, you can take that lure, you can take that dead bait. Uh, I'm I'm lazy, but at night if this guy come out, that's called the eyes. That eyes will come out and they will start uh, hunting. So basically, you have to go around like uh, 10, 11 o'clock or 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock. And if you're, what I'm talking about is uh, a shore fishing. If you have a boat, these walleyes are segregated in the deep, um, uh, deep in the lake. So if you have a boat, there won't be any any struggle for you to catch a walleye with a jig or uh, a spoon or something, you know. But uh, if you're shore fishing, this is the best time. And I have I have caught like 68. Uh, walleyes last year 68 or 70 walleyes i am talking about 68 or 70 walleyes of 60 65 centimeter plus i have caught tons of walleyes last year but this year i don't know in alberta the walleye population is very down i don't know uh, the fishing management is not working properly uh, there is uh, uh, most of the lakes here in alberta and uh, pp1 so on they are all uh, walleyes are catch and release and uh, still there is not much population i don't know there was lots of winter uh, wind fishing done a year ago and uh, most of the fish were caught during uh, the winter time and they didn't get the time to 
born uh, during that uh, spring or whatever time they used to do that. So basically, I don't know what happened. The fishing population, the walleye population in Alberta is uh, is an alarmingly low. I don't know what happened. I don't know what has happened. Uh, there's nothing much improvement I see that too. Like I used to go catch a lot of walleyes this uh this three months last three months i haven't caught like many and it was so sad this is the time uh during the spring and uh, during the fall i get lots of walleyes this year nothing so basically uh, for walleyes if you if you reel that uh, lure back really slowly then walleyes can uh, look at your lure and okay that's something coming to me and uh, they can act uh if you reel it too fast it's best for the pike and muskie but uh, i have seen they are doing the figure of eight uh, for the muskie and stuff uh, but walleyes they tend to follow your lure really slowly not like pike pike they're like a rocket they will just come and slam it but uh, walleyes tend to take it very slow so you have to reel it back a little bit slow and if you have a jig if you have uh, um, leech leech is one of the best lure if you have leech or uh, um soft lures then that's the best for walleyes then i want to talk about sturgeon uh, i i caught two sturgeon they, they were babies uh, i have seen but i couldn't take the video i was uh, uh, before you go for uh, catching uh, sturgeon you need to know where there is actually sturgeon uh, if you haven't caught a sturgeon from a particular part of the river uh, we have uh, uh, we have limited lakes where there is sturgeon. So basically, uh, it's all uh, in river. And you need to know the fishing holes where you find uh, sturgeon. If you're just doing a sturgeon fishing somewhere here and there, uh, a 98 percentage of the time, you will be, uh, you'll be getting nothing. Because sturgeon used to stay in a particular spot. When there is uh, more water, they might move. But basically, uh, I know a few fishing holes in uh, my, uh, my, uh, my own place here where there is sturgeon and uh, i couldn't hook up a bigger one but i have uh one day i was fishing there and i didn't take all the lure for the sturgeon i was just trying for the pike and this guy actually landed a six feet sturgeon uh after about 1.5 about like one hour i really thought that i should go back home by the time he can he lands that the sturgeon i can go back home take my um, video stuff my cameras and stuff and shoot that but um, uh, it was like a 1.5 uh, kilometer walk to where i parked the car so basically it wasn't possible for me so i let it go and that was a huge sturgeon i really 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 i i caught a, stur a sturgeon that was a bigger one that time also i didn't have a camera with me but that was the best fight you can see like you all your muscles they are all tense you can do like two hours workout in a YMCA and you, you won't get tired. But after I spent like 35 minutes, there were like a huge crowd in that river area where I was catching that sturgeon. Like they wanted to see what's going on. And, uh, you know, when I get excited, I scream. I, um, I make all those noises and I'm very super excited. I'm going to talk about it. And uh, finally, I landed that sturgeon that was really, really huge. I, I can't I couldn't imagine like how I did that. So basically when you use when you go for sturgeon, you should basically use worms, uh, night crawlers for any fishing. If you're going for a uh, fishing trip, you need to you, you need to know which lake you're fishing, what are the fish species there? what are the what are the native uh, small fishes there like uh, uh, the the common pre, uh, common baits they are using there. So if you go there and you find lo lots of night colors or uh, uh, crayfish or whatever, then you obviously know that those fish are uh, eating on those stuff already there in that lake. So you can mimic, you can imitate those kind of uh, baits for your live bait or dead bait, and you can easily catch a fish. So uh, for sturgeon, I use worms. Minnows can be used. I haven't seen or I haven't had anybody hooked a um, uh, sturgeon using a spoon or a soft lure if you guys have ever hooked a sturgeon with a soft lure let me know virginia i'm gonna try meeting up with you after first of the year thank you gene 
Hola, Jim, the cat man. You're welcome to come down, Jim. Uh, I I kind of know, like you guys, mostly live in uh, United States, and uh, uh, I can come down, but uh, it's gonna cost me a lot. But uh, when I take, I haven't taken a vacation for like three years. I don't know if you can uh, if you can understand what I'm doing, but I haven't taken a real vacation in three years. But I work four days and four days off. If I call, uh, if I don't go to work, like I take two days off from work, that means six days. Then if you go for camping more than five days, uh, it's gonna I'm gonna be bored. So basically, I didn't have to take a vacation because my work is like that: four days work, then four days off. So basically, you get lots of uh, off time uh, on your regular regular off days. So if you have hooked up a, a sturgeon using a spool or a plastic lure, let me know. So I I, I would know. Fight to me and kill me. I need a vacation. Um, you know, I didn't take a vacation just because I, I used to get a lot of days off and I I really don't like sitting somewhere doing nothing. So in the time I like to work more, but uh, this year, no, this year I am thinking about doing a lot of um, uh, ice fishing. So if you guys, uh, any of you guys can actually do a live stream on um, basic ice fishing techniques. That would be wonderful. I I need to uh, I need to learn some uh, ice fishing too. Um, I have purchased uh, everything I needed for I guess uh, for ice fishing. But if anybody, uh, any of you guys can do a um, ice fishing um, live stream, then I can ask some question and I can get clarified. So it will help me uh, for this uh, winter time. Winter time there's not much action, and uh, I like to fish and I don't mind cold. Uh, I was fishing the other day in the cold without a proper tear, and I still was okay. But I'm not saying like you have to do that. Uh, but uh, I don't mind the cold. But um, I need to know the basic technique. I don't want to just go there and simply come back without knowing all the proper technique for uh, ice fishing. So basically, uh, I have seen some videos, and I'm not hundred percent ready to go. I'm not confident enough, but. I have already done some ice fishing this year already, and uh, they were unsuccessful. I, I, I would say like it was in, uh, because my poor techniques, because uh, you know uh, there was not fish around that area where I fished, and uh, uh, you know that was um, uh, that was not the best time to do the ice fishing. The ice were not that healthy too. Uh, guys, please support each other, and you guys always do that. And there's no need for saying that again and again. And I have. Uh, gone to three people's live stream today um actually i was at work but uh, i stopped by and say hi and support her, uh, or whoever uh, were in that live stream so i went ahead and subscribed to everybody who were there on that live stream and that's the way you can actually support uh, each other uh, people so you know uh, when you are here you know take take a few minutes to go to different people's channel and um, kind of subscribe the channel and comment on the video so it will help everybody to grow okay so now i'm going to go on to uh, white fish i caught a few white fish uh, this year and uh, i wasn't using the uh, the proper technique there too but um, uh, uh, this guy I, I i don't know which country i think he's he's from korea and he's catching a lot of uh, white fish i am sitting there uh, 6 hours and I, I haven't had even a bite. This uh, this uh, Korean person, uh, uh, he's fishing whitefish one after another. So basically, uh, you know, I, I I don't mind, but I didn't want to ask, uh, like, uh, how do you fish, what loose you are using, uh, and can you show me how to do that uh, to somebody who I really don't know. And, uh, you know, people have their own fishing uh, techniques fishing tricks and fishing secret that I don't want to exploit but uh, after I spent like uh, four days and this guy was there and catching like 10 fish in like in one hour and uh, I'm like struggling all day so I went ahead and uh, I asked about uh, how you catching uh, this white fish this guy, guy was super nice he came up to me he said this is not good this is not good I really wanted to say that you were not doing it right but I didn't want to, you know, uh, say that, you know, 
just to not, not just to bother you so i kind of hold it on so i said you know you should have told me uh, four days ago then i should have started fishing now so basically he actually uh gave all the materials and made that uh, uh system like the setup for me to catch white fish and uh, i bought the same stuff i bought the same stuff from a canadian tire the next day but he uh he set it up for me and i start catching white fish right after i was super happy and i am so thankful to i don't know his name but uh, i remember he was very helpful he's from korea he doesn't know a uh, lot of lot lot of english but um, you know he was really helpful you, you know language is just a medium i i am bilingual i talk more than uh, three language english malayalam tamil a little bit of hindi you know i understand telugu and kannada so language is just medium of uh, medium of communication if i tell you something and you understand what i'm talking about then obviously the purpose of that uh, language is uh, is completed or is achieved so basically what I'm, i was trying to say he didn't know any english but he taught me how to do that and he's my teacher for um, um, white fishing so guys you know you never know who is going to help you when you need it so it's not about the color it's not about the uh, language it's nothing about your culture or civilization or whatever you know you're talking about it's all about the humanity it's all about love love each other and you will get the love back so what i'm trying to say so that's how uh, the white fish the white fish doesn't need even a lure there is a custom made hook where you can use a copper wire instead sometimes if you uh, if you wrap a small uh, six or eight size hook and you wrap a copper wire or a red uh, if you can paint the top part upper uh, upper one third red that's all you need you need a float a split shot and this hook and you can catch white fish really that simple i didn't know i bought lots of stuff i watched all the youtube videos how to catch uh lake trout uh how to catch oh, sorry um uh, how to catch uh white fish and i bought all unnecessary items so guys so uh, what what are you gonna do um john ames uh okay are you leaving okay thank you for stopping by um uh, just because I, I really wanted to talk about this stuff today uh, and I really 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 thankful to whoever uh, supported me today and who are already here in the live talk and I'm, I'm so thankful to any everybody so basically uh, it's you can buy you can watch a lot of uh, uh, YouTube videos on how to catch this fish how to how to catch this fish and how, what are the lures you need to use for this fish what are the setup to use that fish you can watch some videos are misinterpreting some videos are uh, <clears throat> misleading you might buy like a tons of stuff for catching white fish all you need a split shot a float and a one or a 50 cent hook that's all you need to catch white fish within no time you can use all these fancy lures sit there just like me all day and you won't be able to even get a bite so you need to know what exactly needed for that particular water body uh, where you're catching fish so white fish is very easy to catch so if there is a moving water if there is a water falling from a high height to the reservoir that's where the white fish will come the white fish will move move to uh, wherever the water is moving and that's where you can actually catch the white fish uh, in alberta alberta is the is the heaven for white fish if you like white fish i don't like white fish <clears throat> you can catch 10 white fish uh, a, a, a white fish uh, originally will be like a four to five pound. So 10 white fish, like a 10 into 20, 20 pound of white fish a day, you can take home if you want to eat. There is like tons of white fish. Uh, most of the people don't do a catch and list. I was watching a video today and this guy was, uh, he was catching crappie. And uh, one of the guy was like really, really, really worried that uh, it was in the catch and list. So uh, he was explaining to the rest of the people there, like a crappie, we have abundance of crappie here, and it's not a catch and release. It's actually kind of an invasive species uh, in the country where I'm fishing. So <coughs> you don't have to do a lot of catch and release for every fish. Basically, I had to pull out like a five or 10 uh, sucker fish uh, from the river, and uh, they are invasive fish. If that's there, you know about the sucker fish 
uh, those suckers they will multiply in abundance they will take uh, take all the habitat they will change the habitat they uh, they change the environment and the homeostasis of that particular water body so if you catch an in invasive species i have seen um, uh, i have seen news about uh, there were uh, catfish in uh, uh, british columbia in some of the lakes they had to literally empty the whole lake and get rid of those um, invasive uh, catfish somebody took from their own home country if you like uh, catfish you can catch it at your place but if you bring it to a place where there is not catfish and if it is if it is going to be uh, multiplying in that uh, particular uh, lake it is very very bad for uh, our country so guys please please make sure if you have uh, if you have seen some invasive species it is best to take them out of the water body and uh, you know either you eat it or you kill it so it won't multiply and make uh, uh, the available oxygen or increase the oxygen demand for the rest of the fish so that's about the white fish then about the trouts so rainbow trout or brook trout or cutthroat uh, trout or uh, brown trout or water trout you're fishing uh, you have to use different lures there is marshmallows you can use and marshmallows of different uh, uh, different smell there is cheese smell there is garlic smell there is prawn smell there is different 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 smells of marshmallows you can get you can actually use your own marshmallow and use some uh, uh, fish spray and use it there you can use your you know basically we have to go cheap for fishing so uh, we you buy like a nine dollar shrimp for uh, trout fishing and uh, you use a, a whole pack of shrimp that day you're losing nine dollar you have to go cheap so you can buy like one dollar uh, corn uh, frozen corn and you can use it as a hook you can use salmon eggs and very fancy stuff but you don't need any of those things you can use night crawlers uh, trout will any fish will eat uh, worms so you can use worms you can use a spoon you can use plastic lures or you can simply use uh, uh, homemade homemade duff so all these uh, duff power bait Power bait is the best for trout fishing, but uh, you can make power bait at home. You can watch some YouTube videos and you can instantly make power bait at home. And uh, it will be like a $2 expenditure for making a one year uh, full of uh, uh, dove. Uh, you can use it for a full year fishing. So, you know, you have to think cheap when you go fishing. You don't have to go like fancy, fancy. You don't have to go like uh, extraordinarily uh expert in and uh, spend all your money for fishing if you like to fish you have to put some energy into how to catch the fish cheap and uh, you know it's all about the fun if you have lots of money go ahead and buy whatever lure you want to buy for that uh, particular fish so i'm talking about prawn um uh shrimp or night crawlers spoon uh or dove or marshmallows you can use it for uh, use for uh, trouts and if you see a, a, a trout jumping, if you can cast it out to the same place where you see in the jumper, it's obviously gonna, uh, you can obviously get that fish. So you can always, even if you're, uh, you're fishing, you have, to, you have to cover the whole lake and you have to see if there's a jumper somewhere. Uh, there will be, a, and fly fishing is the best method for catching trout. So if you know how to do a uh, fly fishing, uh, stuff then obviously you'd use that and if you see a jumper and that's where you have to cast out that's where you have to put the uh, marshmallows or whatever you are using and that's where you can actually hook a trout and trout is very very delicious and um, uh, you can cook you can bake you can you can barbecue you can do whatever you want with the uh, trout and there most of the lakes are uh, stocked trouts so, you know, it won't be a big deal for the fishing population if you catch the limit or if you keep one or two. So make sure you are using um, the best uh, marshmallows or cheese or corn or um, spoon for catching trouts. And the trouts really tend to, uh, they are not the superficial uh, eaters. They are not the bottom eaters. They are in between. So these guys are kind of in between. So when you throw the marshmallows, 
they are floating uh, so you are like one or two uh, maybe like uh, 15 to 20 inch above the uh, the base uh, the float will be the marshmallows or uh, salmon eggs or everything will be floating so that's where actually uh, the trout see the the uh, the bait and they will uh, they will take it so basically <clears throat> Uh, you don't put it or don't put all the way to the bottom so they are not like really bottom feeders but if you're using fly fishing obviously you know they will come up to the top and take the flies and trout loves flies so if you're doing fly fishing next year i'm gonna start doing some fly fishing this year i'm gonna continue with some uh, ice fishing i need everybody's support i need everybody um, uh, if we can talk about some ice fishing and uh, fly fishing if any of you guys um if any of you guys uh, uh, want to do um, uh, some live stream about ice fishing and uh, uh, fly fishing uh, you 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 should do it because you know why 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 i'm telling you this just because you know uh, it will be easy for the beginners just like me to catch fish easily uh just ate me uh great fishing tips thank you um how are you today fishing every bit every day uh i'm good to you great fly fishing sounds fun oh yeah fly fishing you know i i i'm gonna start next summer uh it's been done now so i'm gonna wait for next summer and start doing some fly fishing i was vaccinated with uh, some of the guys where i was fishing and these guys were catching uh, fish one after another with the flies and fly fishing is the best and uh, it's beautiful even even for you to just just look at it and watch it it's mind-blowing that how easily how uh, beautifully they are catching trouts with the fly fishing you can catch any fish you can catch pike or walleyes or whatever whatever with the fly fishing but the trout fly fishing is the best uh, power bait trout fishing power bait is the best uh, pike fishing, dead bait or big lures, uh, soft lures the, is the best. Uh, walleyes, jig, and uh, this bifurcated uh, jig heads and um, soft lures and um, leech is the best. For white fish, uh, that uh, one third of the top of the hook, uh, size eight or um, size six or eight hook with upper upper one third is colored with red. And a float and a split shot is the best. And uh, for perch, uh, worms are the best. Or you can use uh, wax worm. You can use um, you, you can use any kind of worms, and the trout will take it. You can use uh, plastic worms. Trout. Uh, I'm talking about perch. Perch can take it. And perch fishing is fun too. Like you can literally catch. I have a video catching uh, 15 perch in like a, about 15 minutes. That was like it. Just throw it out. Take the fish throw it out take the fish sometimes it's i i was using a pecker lake so one one cast two fish one cast two fish that was really fun and perch is very very nice to eat if you can just scale it you know don't skin it just scale it and if you can fry with the salt pepper uh turmeric powder and a little bit of um, uh cayenne pepper it's the best uh then um uh trout you can actually fry it or bake it. We we already discussed about how to do uh, salt salt fish or basa or tilapia fillet. You can do the same way, or you can simply uh, wrap it in a aluminium foil after cleaning and uh, uh, you know after cleaning and get rid of the in the strain and stuff. Uh, put some salt and pepper and some um, um, uh, a little bit of uh, garlic. You can just push that uh, garlic cloves in there and put some. Um, um uh melted margarine and uh, some bay leaf or dill powder and just wrap it in a aluminum foil and barbecue it it's the best so so have you tried to eat fly fish eggs what does it taste like oh fly fish a fly fish uh, i was i was meaning like uh, you can uh, instead of casting uh, it's a different casting technique. It's a different casting uh, thing. Like uh, you, you cast a fly. It will be a surface thing, and the fly will be floating on top of the water, and the fish will eat it. And I never heard about the.
fly fish eggs i i don't know what that means uh but uh, you know i don't eat uh, i don't even eat good fish so i don't i am not going to try eat any of the fish eggs but people like to eat, eat, eat uh sushi and stuff uh you know i have seen people eating sushi and it, it is said to be that it is the best food you have to you are not losing any protein when you heat the uh, fish actually the protein get uh, polymerized and um, uh, changed to something different that is not really 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 good for our health so basically if you can have sushi with the hot sauce or whatever stuff you want to use it with it will be good but uh, i'm not going to try it i only cook fish and eat it i cook i eat only food that is really cooked other than foods so uh fishing every every day by thank you for stopping by i have i think i have covered pretty much all the fishing uh, uh fishing species for basic fishing so i want to conclude what i was trying to say so uh, you need to know which water body you are going and fishing you need to know the fishing regulations you need to know the uh, the fish fish poss possession limit you need to know the bait ban and if there is any any other laws related to that if you are using a uh, a boat or something you need to know whether you can have a motorized boat in there or not stuff like that so uh, then you find out what our species of fish are there then you have to pick your lures according to the species of fish that is found in that water body and try to imitate your lures with the, the normal flora or normal fauna of that uh, water body so it will imitate the usual usual dinner and uh, the fish will uh, uh, try to take it as easily uh, easily compared to the artificial uh, loops that you are uh, bringing bringing you with okay then uh, you you find out what lake you you know the, the loss you cast out according to the uh, according to the depth of the water you reel it slowly or reel it fast you try both ways one will work and that's the way you have to do it in that day and you uh, look at the color of the lure you are using and um, try to mimic with the the, the real colors of that uh, water body and again uh, use your common sense uh, use your rod straight and uh, you use a uh, rod up straight uh, uh, keep up and uh, make the leverage on the rod not on the line and uh, you are uh, you are fishing if, if if you have something wrong with your uh, your line or lure get it fixed before you go fish go for fishing once you reach there you, you don't spend any time uh, fixing any of this stuff you have to get it done at your home so you will be you you will get all the time uh, for fishing so if you if you see like there is some uh, something wrong with the line somewhere uh, halfway or uh, in the beginning get rid of that if you hook a fish and if it breaks from there you are actually losing the fish and you will be crying all night for that so basically fix all your stuff fishing gear should be maintained just like your girlfriend or boyfriend if you take all the care it will give you the care back so if you hook up a fish and your your fishing gears are maintained like your girlfriend uh, she's going to love you she's going to come to you as as fast as possible so guys thank you for watching dr fishing today and thank you for commenting on our, on my video thank you for hitting a thumbs up and thank you for giving valuable um, message to me and uh, your opinions and suggestions uh, i will go through the rest of the opinions and suggestions i will try to improve myself and i thank each and every one of you and whenever you guys go live i will definitely come and join you if i am not at work if i am at work i will still say hi and uh, i will try to subscribe who are present in that uh, particular room so next time when i am google hangouting if you guys want to join me i can send you the link so we can have more than two people talking about so there won't be much bo boring topic i won't be that boring if you if i have somebody to talk with me so basically um so that's all about the basic fishing technique even you catch white fish or uh, trout walleye pike perch catfish uh, or husky or sorry musky or uh, pickerel like uh, or sturgeon or whatever fish use your common sense make sure you handle the fish properly and uh, uh, then that's all you need to and you have to have the passion and love for fishing and hunting or whatever you're doing so do what you like and like what you do 
So that's all I want to tell you. Do what you like and like what you do. And this is Dr. Fishing signing off. And I will see you guys next time with another topic. And thank you everybody for joining me on my room today. And uh, we'll see you guys next time. Take care. Bye.